want to introduce you to Clinique's first foundation designed to be the last step in your skincare routine. Even better clinical serum foundation is formulated with three serum technologies that visibly reduce dark spots, brighten, and hydrate skin. This one's really a game changer. The first time I used it, I realized I had to stop thinking about this product as foundation. It really is the serum. It's the serum step in your skincare, but it also has the tint so you don't have to do the foundation step. The serum is legit. It has vitamin C for brightening, and that's what I really noticed a big difference with. It's also hydrating, so you're getting brightening, hydrating, and it's smoothing. It helps to sort of retexturize with a little bit of salicylic acid. Oh, did I mention the UV protection? It's sort of like, you know how Jess, you and I talk about, we need everything all in one. Here it is. All in one. This hydrating foundation formula provides buildable, medium to full coverage with satin finish. I love that it's oil-free, waterproof, and sweat and humidity resistant. It's available in 42 shades. Find your shade with Clinique Clinical Reality Shade Match Science. It has a virtual try-on. You can't call this makeup. This is skincare in just your shade. Find your shade today at Clinique.com. Hello, hello. It is fat mascara time. What's up? I'm Jess. Hi, Jess. Hey, everyone. I'm Jen. It's like back to school time. Oh my God. <laughs> it's like weirdly, well, you know, I, I'm really big on the change back into September tomorrow. What? In my head, I went to menopause. I was like, wait, we're doing, you have menopause? Is that what happened in the no, three weeks that I no, didn't no, see no, you? No, That's no. not the change we're talking no, about. No, no. I, I like, love- well, it's not fully like the change into fall, but I, I do like, I'm, sa- I'm sad to say goodbye to summer. But I'm happy. Well, A1, I'm happy you're back. You know, we had you, you had, we had you back technically for the Terry Bryant interview. Great interview, by the way. I really oh, enjoyed talking to her. So good. So good. What a great way to start our season. Yeah. Yeah. But now I feel like it's we're really kind of revving up. And it's nice to kind of have everyone like back in the room to our like kind of regular FM news. Our Wednesday news episodes. Yeah. I feel like this is kind of like when we kind of can all gather around and talk as a group. You know what I mean? Yeah. What did I miss though <laughs> while I was like on my vacation and we had our three weeks off, two weeks off? Um, it did feel like we were gone a while. Uh, I will say that. What did you miss? Well, let's see. I have been, first of all, I've been so freaking busy. I had a little bit of a summer, but I don't really feel like I had a summer summer. I feel like I've been glued, like my but has been glued to my chair all summer. I don't say that in a woe is me way. I say that in like, I have never worked harder in my life than I have this summer. Um, so I kind <laughs> I of can't that. believe that this summer is ending. But I've worked like crazy. I've had like 9,000 brand meetings. And I had to really take care of my cat while you were gone. For those of you who are invested in Farina. She's all right. But like, listen, I'm just gonna be real with you. Like she is like up and down her not like in a health way, but she is like a rescue kitty and like, we can never pick her up. Like she's like, she'll come over for kisses and like pets, but we cannot pick her up without being like, she, like she fights for her life and like, we can be like gravely injured Mm. and we had to evacuate and we couldn't bring her. That's like a whole long story. She's okay. There was a fire scare. Why were you? There was a a fire scare. And so, you know, I never thought about that. If you have to quickly get out of your house with your pet and your pet is a rescue pet, yeah. and you know how it is. It's like a whole rigmarole to get them wherever you need to go. Right. So that was like, that for me was like the last 911, like, you know, real scare. So because we can't bring her, just like real quick, fast forward, what I did was, and we can't medicate her because you can't pick her up to medicate her. Like, and we've tried yeah. every like trick in the book, like every, like, please oh. don't send me your tricks because I've tried them all. Like I've, I've worked with the vet, like I, <laughs> we've talked about it on people, the like your past cat had issues. Yeah, yeah. Don't send me your tricks. I've tried, we've had like special medicine compounded for her, like by a fancy pharmacist, all that stuff that smells like chicken, all, all that stuff. We've poop, we've put it in every kind of food, baby food, chicken, whatever, all that stuff. I had, this is where it gets beauty guys. I contacted a highly regarded published cat behaviorist came to my home and performed Reiki on me and my cat. Wait, you and your cat at the mm-hmm. same time? She did you Reiki. You had a Reiki master, Reiki oh, Farina. certified Reiki. Why are there no videos? What, what, you can't just drop that on us and not well, like... Well, she might come back. She might come back. 
Did it help? What happened? It totally helped, at least for Stop. that time. And there's been a marked improvement since she left. I can't, still can't pick her up, but we, but we were able to get more air time. When I say air, I mean like paws off the, paws off the ground. But she's not like, you know, yeah. she, I still can't pick She's not a cuddle bunny now, but you yeah. know, no, no, I get it. But there was market improvement, and now she's like way more like attached and cuddly. It is wild. I, you asked why there wasn't... Can we get links to the Reiki master? Yeah, her name is Carol, Carol Wilborn, and I think her website is The Cat Therapist. She's okay, bitch. I'm going to put it in the show notes in the blog, so everybody... Because yeah. I bet you there's other people in the... New Jersey, New York metro area, who could use her She's services. She's freaking awesome. She does Zoom. She is genius. She's published. She's done like she's she's gone. She's like flown to people's homes, but she does Zoom. How long was the Reiki session? Oh, it was it was a mini Reiki. She's called a chair session because it wasn't like, you know, and hands off, right? Hands Just off, yeah. Above. Mhm. I definitely felt something, but then I'm going to laugh because remember how I, I I recommended the Ocean Sleepy playlist? She yeah. gave me a, a a song for for Rena to play, like a playlist. Okay, that's all kinds of sounds, like cat sounds, orca sounds. Her voice to play for Farina. Carol's voice. Yeah, Carol's voice talking to Farina. Carol's Reiki master voice. Mm-hmm. And I want this track. <laughs> <laughs> it's really relaxing. And Farina was like flat out cold, like on her back, like <laughs> chill. Totally chill, chill. Like blissed out. Loving it. It was so amazing. It's been a crazy, amazing, like spa-like <gasps> meditative experience. So I just wanted to share that because if anyone has a cat that has issues, totally worth work- looking into Carol or Reiki. another therapist. There are options. But I just wanted to share that as a wellness experience and also personal story. And also so many of the Venn diagrams that Fat Mascara hits yeah. on. We've got pet care, animal love, Reiki, wellness. Yeah. Jess's life. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even, I'm not even going to update anybody on what happened to me. We'll talk like next Wednesday no, about I, like I, I how feel, my August went. No, I want to no, hear. I gotta, yeah, <sighs> mine's not good. That's all positive. It makes me really happy. And I went to Alaska with my family and a bunch of us got COVID. So, you know, <sighs> there's that. <laughs> but, um. I, and I lost my sense of smell for two days and it's still coming back. And what an experience. What a weird experience. I've written about anosmia and you guys know how important yeah. uh, the olfactory is to me. <laughs> my yeah, is everyone in your family okay right now? Everyone's okay, yes. All, all were vaccinated. So at the worst of it was like colds, symptoms, and me losing my sense of smell mm. and still coming back with a taste, which is very weird. And I don't know how to explain it to anybody. If you haven't experienced, I wasn't stuffy. It felt like blindness. It's the so weirdest crazy. thing because you're it, you're getting the input, you're getting the air through your nose, but without the information. And it's very, it's very disturbing. Did you? End and you up, know what I did to test? Yeah. Right. I was like testing foods. I was like, can't smell that. Can't smell this. And I was like, what? I could do a perfume, but perfumes aren't all very familiar mm-hmm. to me. I was like, you know what scent will do it? I had a bottle of Moroccan oil shampoo mm. with me. <laughs> They're like a travel size. They make great travel size, by the way. And I was like, if I can't smell Moroccan oil shampoo because it has a gorgeous bloom and a great fragrance in the shower, I was like, then I definitely lost my sense of smell. And so I went and took a shower to like chill out and think about it. And I was like, I smell nothing. And I got out of the shower and Eric's like, oh no, I smell it because the bathroom always like smells like that delicious ambery kind of scent. Yeah. And I couldn't smell it, but. Were you you afraid that it would never come back? I cried. Yes. Because I have a friend not never, because the studies show that within two years, 95% of people that have gotten anosmia from COVID get it back. But even the thought of two years without my sense of smell was so scary. And I have a friend who's, mm-hmm. I think, about a year and a half now, and she's finally starting to taste food normally. So I was really scared, and I was really lucky that that's all that happened. So, wow, what an August for us. Like, these are big life things yeah. that just happened. I'm st- I'm still I hope you guys had a good nervous, and yeah. safe and happy and productive August. Yeah. I miss the fam. Me too. I really, I have to say, I felt like something was definitely missing. My uh, recording days definitely felt a little like, uh, like a little, little, I don't know. I felt, felt like a piece of my, uh, my life was missing, not recording with you and not kind of checking in with everybody. Yeah, with the, P.S. I yeah, did look up, I, it was the cat therapist.com. So yeah, that's how okay, you can great. reach Carol. And she's, she's awesome. Very kind Amazing. person. Okay. Should we do a show? Let's do a show for everyone. Let's do, <laughs> Let's do the it. news. Let's raise some wands. 
get back into the groove with the Fat Mascara fam. Awesome. Let's do it. Okay. Ready for the news? Tell me everything. Let's talk Let's beauty. Talk about everything. Yes. Everything. Okay. Well, I'm going to kick it off with Stella McCartney because I love her. Okay. So she is launching Stella, a clean skincare line, and she's partnering with LVMH on this. So normally we hear clean skincare. What is it? But if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be Stella. Because- You'll allow it. You'll allow it. <laughs> the queen of, of v- vegan leather. Like, okay, we'll allow she's, you to call it clean yeah, Stella. Yeah, she's the real queen of clean because, you know, listen, let's go back in time. Let's go back in time. Let's turn it back. She launched a clean line 15 years ago. Do you remember this? Thank you. So the minute I saw the news last week, I almost texted you to be like, am I crazy or didn't she do this? And I remember thinking it's too, like people don't know what you're talking about. It was like these white bottles. I totally remember the line. Yeah. I thought it was chic AF. Mm -hmm. I liked the concept, but it didn't take off because people are like, what? You're taking stuff out of skincare? It was called Care. It was like it was like a oatmeal, yes. oatmeal color. Yes, it had a beautiful font. I knew you'd remember it. I knew you'd Do remember. I it. ever. It had the. You probably have a bottle somewhere in one of your beauty closets. <laughs> I think it's still. probably in like, storage. Like, yeah, with your Anna Sui like face glitter. <laughs> it was totally. That was the era. That was the era. Yeah, it had the most amazing ad of this girl like holding a baby sheep. Do you remember? Yes. Yes. She had like no shirt. Yes. Yeah. It was all like big naked. So she did this when she had a beauty license with YSL Boutte. And this was, I, I looked it up because I wanted to really understand what her, like the ingredient point of view was. And I was able to kind of pull like an old PR release Stop. from this. Okay. Is it the same line? Is it just the same no, line? No, 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 no. But, I, but oh, okay, listen, okay. I, what I do remember from memory, because I remember writing about it for work, this was the first time I'd ever heard of EcoCert. And I was like... What is EcoCert? And I remember yes, being like yes. challenged by like the copy, the fact checking department or something. Like, what is it? Define EcoCert. And I was like, okay, well, this is a brand. This is a company that actually puts accountability to, you know, what a clean brand is. And I think maybe like, I mean, this, I'm getting too off the news topic, but. Right. And now is, everybody knows what EcoCert exactly. is. Like, it's on like every brand has Eco certification from yes. EcoCert. Yeah. So I think, you know, she's really a, 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 you know, a designer and um, obviously like a a person in luxury beauty who is a pioneer here. So I think this is very exciting. Oh, and then I started to mention this before. Yeah. Like the brand was silicone free, paraben free, vegan, didn't have any... the original the one. new one, but also the original one. It's funny though, because a lot of the press for the new brand, they weren't really mentioning that she had one 15 years ago, no. but like anybody who knows beauty probably is like, wait a second, you've done this already, but you're really it's better, exciting. So like yeah. the new one, they probably want me to talk about the new one, right? So <laughs> this is what they want. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't pay for this. No, They're just no, like they didn't reminiscing. Pay, they, no, no, no. They did not pay for this. Um, but call mm-hmm. us if you want to do something because I'd love to. I freaking love Stella. <laughs> okay. So so she's working this with LVMH, which is her fashion brand's parent company, on a three-piece collection, cleanser, serum, cream. She told Women's Wear Daily, I am not that person who wants to buy into a million pounds, a million products for different areas of my face. I don't want all that stuff in my life, which is so what we're hearing and what I think the mood is right now, like skinimalism. Mm -hmm. She wants less and she wants it to work. She wants it to be honest and compliment her way of thinking and and living life. And she obviously wants to do the cleanest skincare that they could do in luxury, the purest of the pure. So this is so exciting, Jen. You know who's doing the fragrance? Tell me. Maison Francis Kirkshen, perfumer, sorry, perfumer oh. Francis Kirkshen, sorry, and, and not oh. Maison, but Sheik. he's also, you know, under oh, the LVMH like umbrella. Product green, vegetal, floral, but super light in that way that it just feels like a little wrap that I just silk around my skin. Well, you know what's in it? Mentholated eucalyptus. Eucalyptus, of course. Oh. Of course. It just gets better. The products come in baby food style recyclable pouches that are made from wood waste and they fit into recycled glass bottles and jars. So mm. everything mm. about this feels exciting, luxury. I, this is like, I can't wait to get my Jessica hands on Jessica Matlin it. is here for it. I am so here for it. It's going to be sold direct to consumer and launches this month on StellaMcCartney.com. Okay. I'm going to now pivot to a little, a little different sort of uh, beauty story. And honestly, it's a little bit of a beauty bummer. 
Do you know the brand H2O Plus? <gasps> R.I.P. H2O. You heard about yes. this one? Yes. Yes, they okay. used to do a perfume that was really Did good they? too. Before, yes, they had per, like back in the day. That's another like skincare, a little bit before its time, maybe. I don't know. Totally before its time, absolutely. So this brand is over thirty three years old. There's a, if you're listening to, this, to yeah. the show, there's a really good chance that you, you know Jess and I are also over thirty three years <laughs> old. <laughs> barely, barely. <laughs> So this, there's a good chance you've engaged with this brand. It's one of the first premium bath and body care brands that a lot of people have experienced. And yeah, if you're noticing a theme here, like to Jen's point, it was really one of the first clean brands, even though there's no real definition. It was a brand that was free of a lot of the, what we now call like nasties or, you know, like ex- expendables, mm-hmm. but they didn't really beat the drum in the way that, you know, brands do today. It was just kind of part of its DNA. At, the, at its peak, this brand had over 300 retail stores. Can you believe Wait, that? So I think I discovered it at um, Bed Bath & Beyond. Am I wrong about that? Because I used to love Bed Bath & Beyond. You know, you're doing your dorm room in college or your first apartment. And I think that there were those products there specialty. And that's the first place I saw them. Because they had a lot of like spa bath stuff, not just facial skincare when they first started. That sounds familiar to me. I okay. first, I remember the brand had a store around like Midtown 57th Street if somebody wants to fact check me on that, that's fine. But I think that- No, it's going to fact check you. No one's like Googling right now. I'm going to send you an email. I know. It just, that's where I remember like seeing it. But then I also remember experiencing the brand, like seeing it in like a Marshalls or a TJ's when I was younger. I had like a wavy kind of like mm -hmm. bottle. And I was like, oh, let me try this. And I tried it. I was like, oh, so this is what premium body care feels like mm-hmm. this is not dial, you know, really cool brand. Well, they put an announcement on their website saying that the brand is going through challenge. You know, it's like t- they're regretting that they have to retire the brand after like, you know, 33 years. But where the really sad part is, is that for the past 16 years, this has been like the house brand for Disney, all of their hotels, mm-hmm. their cruises, their spas. I was doing mm-hmm. a little research Went on Amazon.com to see the H2O products that are still exist. I looked at all of the review, a lot of the reviews, obviously not all of them. People are discovering this brand through Disney and they are in a complete mourning stage be- yep. because they're like, this is the smell of vacation. This is the smell of memories. My family, <gasps> oh, yeah. I discovered this. And it's even things like foot, oh. foot lotions and eye creams that oh, they did have a good mean Disney to them. Which is which is like an emotional attachment. You know what's funny? We've been talking for the last year about saturation port. We're here. There's too many brands. We're going to start seeing, you know, some paring down of all these brands out there. I wasn't sure which of those brands would be the ones to go. But first we saw like some exiting from the UK with mm-hmm. Smashbox and like that. And it's all, it, now I'm seeing now, what was it? Stella McCartney, we were talking about that 15 years ago. That wasn't around. Mm-hmm. But H2O, I don't know if this is what I would have guessed. I don't know. I thought some of the new influencer brands would just like come and go real quick. I didn't think the ones that like it's like who is this person and are they going to be relevant? Because there's a fan base with especially through Disney with this brand, like a fan base. It's hardcore. There's a Disney vacation like fan website, and they're crying their eyes out. Yeah. 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 So no, I know. I was on a I was on a tour in Alaska, and our group was in the same train as a Disney tour. I was like. I want to be on the Disney tour. That looks fun. They had like, like the Imagineer was like <laughs> hanging out with the kids and teaching them about Alaskan wild. Like Disney vacations are like cool. a, a big thing for a family. And, and if it's tied to scent, yeah. what a memory. So completely. All right. Not to be a bummer, but like rest yeah. in peace, H2O. Yeah. That one really, I was like spent like a half an hour just reading these reviews. Made me, made me upset. So. Oh, just yeah, so nostalgic. <laughs> I just, it's, it's emotional. You know, people, this is why we have a podcast. People have an emotional connection to beauty. Okay. So let's move on to something, uh, definitely striking a different tone here. Pat McGrath and Supreme are joining forces again. Two years ago, they co-branded a lipstick that sold out in seconds. And this time they're dropping a trio of nail polishes in three colors, black, white, and red. So Pat McGrath released a statement or Pat McGrath Labs released a statement that the collection is going to be the first time that the brands, uh, either brands have experimented with nail color. It's going to be for sale on Supreme's website, but neither brand is saying when. So can't help you there. Yeah. 
I don't know. Is this going to be like like Supreme Goods? Like people in a month will be selling it on eBay for like three times as much. Like, are we doing Probably. like a sneaker drop now? Because Supreme is like that, you know. Let's be honest. Every time I see a brand new luxury nail polish, I'm like, it's still nail polish. Like that's one of the skews that like yeah. you buy Maybelline or you buy Louboutin. Both are great, <laughs> but like there's not a huge difference other than the packaging and the it, colors. You know what I mean? And you don't walk around with it. It's not like a status thing where you take it out at your, you know, and night touch out. Up with a lipstick. Very good point. Cause like a lipstick, you can show it off. What are you going to be like? Hold on. Let me just like repaint my nails so everybody can see that I have Supreme. Yeah, I thought, and I was watching, and we'll talk about this in a second, like at, at teaser, teaser, but Linda Evangelista in my bag, the British Vogue video, she opened up her bag and showed what was in it. And she had nail polishes. And I was like, I don't carry my nail polish around. I, I wondered sure if don't. that was like, you know, just showing things that she likes or does she really carry around yeah, the nail like, polish? Like staged a little bit. I don't yeah. know. That's fine if, if she it's did not that. A, she doesn't have a gel, real, like, and you need to touch up a chip in your nail polish. Sure, you'd have one color in your bag, but yeah, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, get your Supreme while you can. <laughs> okay. So the big guys are starting or continuing, depending on uh, your perspective, to pay attention to diversity in sun care. L'Oreal just filed a patent for tinted sun care for Fitzpatrick skin types or deeper Fitzpatrick skin type. So if you don't want the if you don't know what the Fitzpatrick skin type scale is, it's a scale that categorizes different skin tones. So lighter ones are at the lower end, like lower like numerals. One, I think I'm like a two to three, and I think they go up to five. Yeah. Yeah. L'Oreal developed a tinted sunscreen. For that has UVA and UVB protection, suitable for dark photo types five and six, which is plugging this very important gap. So you might be thinking tinted sunscreens are nothing new, but according to the company, they say, quote, regarding tinted SPFs direct, directed for skin photo types five and six, the consumers who identify with these prototypes usually notice that the state of the art compositions leave skin looking ashy. The white cast is noticeable in photos, even in broad daylight. This new composition, they say, is sensorially sensorially superior and can attract <laughs> new customers. So L'Oreal, sensorially superior. <laughs> so that. it's a very L'Oreal way of saying it. <laughs> no, it can, because I right now we have some good clear ones, but if you want a little coverage mm -hmm. with that like mattifying niceness that a tinted sunscreen can do, and you have a deeper skin tone. All right, we'll see I mean, what they make with this patent. Yeah, and I think this is only a good thing. This is only good news that, you know, larger companies are working on this sort of technology. Okay, Absolutely. tomorrow is September 1st. Let's talk about September British Vogue. I've got to say, this is like the buzziest, most exciting, in my opinion, <laughs> September cover I've seen I in a while. It. I was like, yes, I waited to talk to you. I have so many thoughts. Okay, initial impression. Go. Okay, but just be, be, let me get specific. Linda oh, Evangelista. Yeah, Linda Evangelista on the <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Obviously, you knew that. Linda Evangelista, iconic supermodel and former fat mascara guest. That's right. Is on the cover. Is on the cover of British. She Vogue. is back in the spotlight. Yes, before we get into this and I get your opinion, I do think it's interesting that lately all the covers that have been making news have been from British Vogue, not American Vogue. Just saying. Now, what was your initial impression of the images? I think they're beautiful. I think okay. they are Linda worthy. They mm -hmm. are really elegant as they should be. I would hate to see Linda look like the people cover, like a woman that like it's next door. Like we're going to, we need to do at fashion with a capital F here. You know, yeah, everything needs to be at her level elevated. Like, I mean, she has her top right. team, Stephen Mizell, Pat McGrath, Edward Enfold, right. you know, it's, it's fashion. Yeah. Fashion with a capital F. I think we just need to set the, like, roll it back for a second. She's talking about in the interview. Here's what it is. She's covered up with the hat and a scarf. You don't really see a lot of her jaw or neck. And in the interview, she opens up and tells everybody that Pat used tapes and stickies and adhesives to give her that taut, pulled back look. Because she suffered a real situation years ago when she got cool sculpting, which in her words, and cool sculpting is like the fat reducing technology, yeah. which left her with something called paradoxal adipose hyperplasia. Right. 
in We've which the fatty the pod, tissue yeah. yeah grows and hardens instead of shrinking, which is what it's supposed to do. And according to Vogue, it said it made her so depressed that she, quote, can't look in the mirror. Um, by the way, her and Cool Sculpt have settled. So I just like, let, I want to be really clear about that. They've settled, done, it's done and dusted. But she, call, she has said that, quote, she was, she was brutally disfigured, close quote. And she said, it was Gemma saying that like they've used like, like pulleys, you know, to get that skin pulleys. back. <laughs> that makes it very construction. Like, yeah, I'm picturing just like the movie tape. tricks of like the, yeah, like tapes. And people actually are using them in everyday life too for like, a, like, you know, the well, behind Dick, Dick Page said that. And, yeah. Dick was like, there's yeah. tape, you know, to make plus but size But I thought it was interesting that thinner. you gave us the OG fashion look that we were used to back when things were perfected and very airbrushed and very, let's be honest, besides the tape and stuff, it was clearly a lot of digital retouching to these photos and posts that you just can't look at them and not know that. But that they gave us that kind of imagery mm -hmm. and yet gave us the let's be real and talk about what happens behind the scenes of the fact that she was using tapes. It was like a weird disconnect for me, but also very indicative of this moment in time where we still want the perfection and the beauty. And we like that on mm -hmm. when we're scrolling through really quickly, but we also are like, can't you be real with yourself? Like, tell us the truth. And so, yeah, yeah it feels like two different opinions in one, like fashion imagery package. Oh, I would love to have Dick back on to tell us what he <laughs> Yeah. I think, you know, it's, well, I, I think it would be great to hear what Pat has to say, you know? Um, well, of course, yes. <laughs> Mother Pat, uh, <laughs> we're still waiting. <laughs> you know, the journalist. Oh, I um, should do my monthly check-in with her, by the way. <laughs> we'll, we'll get her someday. We'll get her. Now? Is now good? Is now? <laughs> Pat, um, you have time? So I think, you know, Sarah Harris, who is the, the writer of the story, she said, I wonder how healthy this process might be for anyone grappling with body positivity, but also for Linda herself to alter her own reality at a time when she's trying to re recover her, to her confidence. One gets the sense that she acknowledges it too. So yeah, I think like everyone mm -hmm. is on, on the same page there. I think it would be interesting to see, like I would never want to push or suggest like, you know, somebody like puts themselves in a vulnerable pos position, you know, when they don't want to, especially like, you know, when they're not comfortable with their body. You know, I think a lot of people mm -hmm. have been saying like, why did you do that? You should be the face of this. You know, like mm -hmm. if she's not comfortable, why should she have to be the face of anything? But and I do think do we need there to do a portrait photo where she's some... like starkly black and white and shows us all the bumps. Like we, if that's not what you want to do, then you don't do that, you know? Yeah, I think like she's in, in control of her image and I don't want to be prescriptive there, especially if she had an unexpected medical issue, you know? And if I had that to base that same decision, I can't imagine, listen, I'm not a supermodel. So <laughs> I feel like she probably, <laughs> she probably struggled with it. But I also think how interesting would it have been if, you know, she's in the hands of like Stephen Mizell, Edward Enenfall, Pat McGrath, like if she had, just like in a fantasy world, if she had decided that she wanted to show herself in that way, I have no doubt that it would have been really impactful. But she decided not to do that. And I think that's okay. I think it's okay too. But as an editor, I'm like, oh, flip cover. One cover is the one we got, the gorgeous imagery. And then you flip mm -hmm. it over and it's a black and white, serious portrait, mm -hmm. tastefully done, but that shows us the real woman. Could be very cool too. But kudos to her for getting on the cover. Like, you know, like, I just think it's brave. I do. Sorry. It is. It is brave. I think, you know... But imagine if she did do something that was a little bit more, I don't, I don't want to like push her into like something that she's not comfortable with. Like that's the, at the end of the day, it's her body. But mm -hmm. for people who have like body image issues. It could have been powerful if she, she had could have a been camaraderie a, with them through yeah, the injury. She yeah. could have been like, mm -hmm. a, she's already it. a legend. And then she could have been like a legend in, in two ways, but she doesn't have to play that role if she doesn't want to. And she doesn't have to get out of bed yeah. for less than, you know, $100,000 a day or whatever it is now. Ugh, good cover, though. And it got people talking, which is the best part about September Fashion Magazine covers. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, it's so exciting that we're talking about, you know, a, a magazine right now. I think that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, con yeah, congratulations to British Vogue and congratulations to Linda. So, very cool. And everyone Let's go raise it. some wands, shall we? Yeah. We 
We want to introduce you to Clinique's first foundation designed to be the last step in your skincare routine. Even better clinical serum foundation is formulated with three serum technologies that visibly reduce dark spots, brighten, and hydrate skin. This one's really a game changer. The first time I used it, I realized I had to stop thinking about this product as foundation. It really is the serum. It's the serum step in your skincare, but it also has the tint so you don't have to do the foundation step. The serum is legit. It has vitamin C for brightening, and that's what I really noticed a big difference with. It's also hydrating, so you're getting brightening, hydrating, and it's smoothing. It helps to sort of retexturize with a little bit of salicylic acid. Oh, did I mention the UV protection? It's sort of like, you know how Jess, you and I talk about, we need everything all in one. Here it is. All in one. This hydrating foundation formula provides buildable, medium to full coverage with satin finish. I love that it's oil-free, waterproof, and sweat and humidity resistant. It's available in 42 shades. Find your shade with Clinique Clinical Reality Shade Match Science. It has a virtual try-on. You can't call this makeup. This is skincare in just your shade. Find your shade today at Clinique.com. Okay, it's time to raise a wand. I've got one from Ludo from Canada. Hey, Fat Mascara fam. This is Luda from Ottawa, Canada. I'd like to raise a wand to a wonderful candle by Acqua di Parma called Buongiorno. It is a fabulous yellow-colored candle. It looks beautiful in the home. And to match the mood, the scent is citrusy. It has jasmine, cedarwood, and obviously Italian lemon top notes. The throw is wonderful. The longevity is there. It's truly a luxury product, though. It's here in, in Canada, it's almost $100. I believe that comes out to $70 to $80 in the States. So this is, this is a real splurge. But if you can splurge, it's such a wonderful scent for summer. It brings back an Italian orchard to home. And just the yellow color, it's, it's such a mood lifter. So I highly recommend that. Thank you very much for everything you do. I'm a longtime listener. Bye. Ludo, that was so good. I feel like I'm going to use that candle not in the summer, but in the fall and winter when you're missing summer. Though it is, you know, like a lemony freshness is like, you're not going to do your evergreen candle in the middle of like August and September, but either way, gorgeous candle, love a splurge. I wanted to come back strong with like a scented candle. What more could represent fat mascara than a delicious scented Mm. candle? So if you guys want to share your Raisa Wands with us, we will start a new homework batch next week. I feel like for now, just send us anything you (laughs) love this this summer. I'm going to come back with my requests because Jess was able to ask for the scented candles that make your uh, home a haven and the, you know, pigmentation products. I'm going to have some more for you next week. In the meantime, send your Razor Wands to info at fatmascara.com. Just make a little voice memo and email it to us or call us and leave a voice message with your Razor Wand for a product that you love. It's 646-481-8182. Jessica Matlin, (laughs) what are you raising a wand to now that we are back with our fall season of Fat Mascara. Okay, I'm I'm feeling a rosy cheek. I'm still feeling like a like a cheek. <laughs> what revolutionary, Jess? <laughs> <laughs> I was ready for like a whole new thing. Like I'm doing like a chocolate brown lip. Okay, tell me about your rosy cheek. My lips are not very. They're they're they're, they're in bad shape right now. My lips are dry. Okay, but tell me about this blush. The skin needs vibrance. The skin needs vibrance. And I found an amazing product to pop life back into this, this mug. Tell me. Make Beauty Heat Stroke. Oh, sorry. Dewy Gel de- Cheek Tint in Heat Stroke. Sorry, I, I flipped it. Okay. Yeah. It was so dramatic until you messed up the name, but it's still very dramatic. Okay. Go on. No, this is... Okay. Th- this is an amazing gel. So you know how we talk about like, are you a powder? blush person? Are you like a cream blush person? I'm going to flip it on you. Are you a gel blush person? Ooh, I used to be with that Bonnie Bell one. Remember back in the day? Yes. They had a gel blush. But now, Remember like the beauty. tart cheek stain? Like I'm really going to like kick they it They were back. like a solid gel. Yeah. This is yeah. a solid You're gel. You're right. It's good for oily skin and dry skin. It's really good on my dry skin. It's really good on my dry skin. And the color, heat stroke? I like heat stroke, yeah. I don't love the name. I don't need a heat. (laughs) (laughs) But I I, thought you liked summer now. (laughs) She's um, over it. I'm a little summered out right now. I could actually. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But your cheeks are staying summery. Yeah. 
It's really nice. And I put it on the other day and people commented positively. That's, this is the thing with, you could try any, whatever. when you put on blush, people always are like, oh, you look so fresh or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like it's one of those things that people notice. It wakes you up. I hear you. I want to try it because gel sounds fun. Yeah. I actually will give you a surprising product for Jennifer Sullivan. (laughs) I'm coming with a powder eyeshadow. Ever since I learned about eyeshadow from Nick. Okay. The Kevin Aquan makeup artist. I was like, you know what? Nick's right. I got to I got to mess around. I got to try. So I am loving Neen, Janine Lobel's. Well, there's a lot of nostalgia in this episode. Janine Lobel, who I know from back in the days, the founder of Stila, but since then has continued her makeup artist career and recently launched Neen. They have these pressed pigments. I'm going to be honest. They kind of remember. Remember the old school Stila that had like a silver cardboard? Their eyeshadows oh my God, yeah, were, were cardboard. iconic. They were the best, best eyeshadows. No matter what photo I had to write about in a magazine, if I needed to color match and I wanted a no fallout shadow, like Stila had an eyeshadow that would <laughs> do it for me. And Kitten, remember how Kitten was like, everyone, everybody wears every, Kitten? One more Kitten. It was like you do Nars Orgasm blush and you do Kitten on the eye, you know? <laughs> oh my God. So I'm some la- of these I'm mean press pigments. Because it's like your teeth. Why? Because it's true. It's, no, it's like, you, it's, you're, you're not even like kind of right. You're like, you could not be more correct. I don't think you can say that in this day and age. There are no like all reaching beauty trends anymore. But back when like we didn't have all the social media, and all the other, kitten was the eye, orgasm was the blush. It's like, and like you. And it just is. It, it's it. Like, that's it. Like, let's just stop the podcast. Kitten was a <laughs> champagne-y, low shimmer champagne yeah. powder press shadow. Anyway, Neen High Beam reminds me of Kitten, but without that pinky undertone. So it's much more an opalescent gold. So it doesn't read yellow gold. It reads almost like a platinum mm-hmm. or what's like gold and silver combined? What would you call that color? Gold and silver combined. Mm-hmm. High Beam. Sounds yeah, interesting. Not, oh, it op- it's beautiful because it's both cool and warm. And I love a color where, you know... The, the the pressed powder pigment is warm, but the pearlescence is cool, and you get the best best of best of both worlds. So this shade I think would work on everybody. If you had dark skin, it could be like a really vibrant, like cool poppy eye. On me, it's pretty visible, and I put it right above my pupils for a little like I'm awake. <laughs> but the best part about it is I really don't like shimmer. I don't like shimmer because uh, fallout. I have a heavy brow. I sweat. I move around. I always end up with shimmer on my cheeks. I don't know what it is about these pressed pigments from Neen, but I do not get fallout like I get with other shimmery-ish shadows. And for me, that's that's it. That You won me with that, but then the color was really awesome too and like a very versatile color. High Beam from Neen. I will link to it in our Shop My Shelf, which we always have for you for every episode. So we have like all the products we mentioned are there, except for this, this week's Shop My Shelf is probably going to be or sorry, they changed the name. It's not Shop My Shelf. It's now Shop My. Anyway, this week's Shop My is going to be like all discontinued products. It's going to be like the old Stella McCartney line. It's going to be like Kitten from back in the day, plus all the stuff we talked about. So uh, can you please send me the Reiki tracks so I can get my beauty sleep to them? Well, they have my cat therapist talking on them. So like you'll probably hear like... For, she probably has a great voice, right? It's it's like... It's, it's not like a... It's good for cats. Oh, is it personalized to Farina? Yeah. No, oh, no, does no, it's not, no, it's not personalized it? to Farina, but it's oh, personalized oh. to cats. Dude, I'd probably think it was really relaxing and help. All right, I'll just stick with Sleepy Track from Ocean Sleepy. I have to tell you, it's funny that you're talking about Shimmer Shadows, but I feel like we do share like a cosmic... Oh, here I was trying to wrap up our show. Yeah, go ahead. No, tell me. like we, we share a cosmic like beauty brain... Because I've been experimenting really hard with, like, um, shimmer shadows. The Isamaya, sorry, Isamaya mm-hmm. palette. From the palette, from yeah. The, from her first collection, her debut collection. The darks or the, or the lights? The lights. Let's get it real. The light shimmers are good, They're aren't incredible, they? incredible, and they've completely like, made me feel like I need to re-explore shimmer for fall 2022. I too I mean like when did I get so I it, maybe it was the pandemic or whatever I was like moisturized sunscreen and like creamy blush I was so boring for a little bit we've got to be on like right yeah. we need to get back into shimmer shadow 
Shimmer Shadow for 2022, fall 20, like for Q4 2024, <laughs> for Q4 2022. Okay. Speaking of nostalgia, sh- we're making one trend for the season, which never happens anymore. But guys, you want to know it's hot this season? So hot right now. <laughs> Shimmer Eyeshadow. You better give it some fun TikTok name or nobody's going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll come up with it by next week. Okay, great. And in the meantime, get your beauty sleep. We will see you on Friday for a great interview episode. We hope you enjoyed the show. It's your reviews and feedback that help us make the podcast even better. Head over to iTunes to rate and review us or email your thoughts to info at fatmascara.com. We also want to answer your beauty questions and hear what products you love. To share a Razor One product review or to ask a beauty question, email us at info at fatmascara. If you send it as a voice memo file, we can even share your voice on the podcast. You can also do that by leaving us a voice message. Our phone number in the United States is 646-481-8182. Thanks so much for listening. 